Thank you and welcome back. Bill Lattis here with Amherst Financial Training. And this is another in the ongoing YouTube series that we're offering, explaining the U.S. capital markets, interest rates, the Fed. And what we're here to talk about today is an economic scenario that is unfortunately one that is appearing here in the U.S. And in fact, it's appearing globally. And it's a huge problem. And the concept economically we want to acquaint you with is the concept of stagflation. Now, stagflation from an economic point of view is the worst of both worlds. Because what stagflation means is it is when your economy is experiencing rising inflation, like we are having here in the U.S. Inflation now here in the U.S. is at the highest level we've seen in 40 years. But normally, inflation is coupled with a strong economy. Normally, in traditional economics, it's a strong economy that leads to inflation. Here's the conundrum we have now. We have a rising inflationary problems, and inflation is a tax we all pay, right? If, if inflation is eating away our money at an 8% level, we have to make 8% more just to keep up. It's basically a tax. So now, though, we're stuck with the conundrum that we have rising inflationary pressures, yet paradoxically, our economies are weakening. Those are usually the opposite of each other. Now, the problem is that creates a real problem for the central banks. And let's talk about our Fed here in the U.S. Our Fed for the last two years has been worried about the economy, as they should be because of the pandemic. We all know what we went through. And the Fed was taking economic measures to try and stimulate the economy. They were printing up money. They were bringing down interest rates. An earlier module we did in this series talked about what the Fed was doing. Well, that was all done to try and stimulate the economy because we we're in the pandemic. Now, finally, here we are two years later, the Fed has acknowledged, oh yeah, inflation is now a problem. For the last two years, we thought it was maybe temporary. It's not temporary. They've acknowledged that. But here's the problem. In now addressing this inflationary problem, the Fed is going to have to take actions. We've talked about tapering in a past module, that the Fed is starting to destroy money. They're starting to raise interest rates. They're starting to reverse what they did during the pandemic because they know inflation has now become a problem. But the problem with that is it's going to further hurt the economy. And the economy is not in great shakes as we sit here. You know, it, it, just to give you some nerdy textbook economics 101. The definition of a recession is very quantitative. It's definitive. A recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. Well, guess what, folks? We had the first quarter of this year had negative GDP. On April 28th, the government announced our economy contracted by over 1%. We could be in a recession right now. So here's the Fed saying we're going to have to slow up the economy, raise interest rates because inflation's a problem. The problem with doing that is they're going to further hurt an already hurting economy. So they're damned if they do, damned if they don't is kind of the situation. And this is the battle that most central banks in the world are faced with today. This growing risk of fear and reality of this stagflation issue. And let me tell you what stagflation looks like because I'm enough of a veteran. I came into the fixed income in the bond market in 1979. You get a little bit of an idea how old I am. My first year in the bond market was in 1979. And that's when we were experiencing stagflation here in the U.S. And for those of you who maybe weren't consumers or don't remember, let me tell you what stagflation looks like. All right, when the U.S. government, first off, inflation was running at 20% in 1979. Just three years earlier, it had been at less than five and it exploded up to 20%. We also had short-term interest rates were at 21%. Long-term interest rates. In 1980, I was fortunate to get a mortgage, new job on Wall Street, ready to become respectable and get a mortgage. As a prime customer in 1980, mortgage rates here in the US were 18%. 18% was my mortgage rate for a prime customer. When the US government issued 30-year bonds in 1979, they had to pay 14% coupon to attract investors to buy U.S. Treasuries, 14%. Now the government issues a Treasury at 30 years, they only have to pay 3%. We had gas rationing in 1979. We could only buy gas for your cars on certain dates. This is what stagflation looks like. This is why people who have lived through it are worried about it. Because here's the other problem. In an ideal world, we would love for the central bank to be able to curtail inflation, 
yet at the same time not hurt the economy too bad. And when we accomplish that, that's what the Fed calls a soft landing. That's the panacea. That's the goal. The reality is it's never happened. All right? Traditionally, when we run into these stagflation problems, the only solution is, is to put the economy into a recession. Right? Paul Volcker was the head of the Fed in 1979, and Volcker had the courage to intentionally put the economy into a recession to break the back of this inflationary problem. We, that's not an ideal goal. In an ideal goal, we'd achieve this soft landing where we can appease both. That's going to be a difficult task, and in fact, it has proved virtually impossible for central banks to really accomplish. Fingers crossed, hope springs eternal. That's the juxtapositioning that our Fed is forced to do. Try and weave this tightrope to balance these two factors that really are, are not complementary. They oppose each other. That's it for today's class. We wanted to hit you with that stagflation as the press is starting to talk about it more. We look forward to further sessions with you. Thank you.